Out of all of the swanky new kit that Apple unveiled at their California streaming event back in September, this is what I was most excited about. I've been using the iPad mini 6th generation for a little bit under a month now, for everything from binging my favourite YouTube channels to of course creating and producing music. I really, really like this iPad, everything from its diminutive form factor to its surprisingly powerful performance. But I don't think it's for everyone. I like you, I do. You are beautiful and very schmoll. <laughs> All right, full disclosure, I was sent this iPad mini by Apple on the understanding that I would be completely honest about my experience with it. I'll be giving it back when I'm done with it and this review wasn't vetted or looked over by Apple or anyone else before I've uploaded it. Apple are seeing it for the first time at the very same time that you are. Okay, in my opinion, there is no such thing as a bad iPad nowadays. Different models, however, will suit different use cases. The base iPad, for example, is a great content consumption device. It's fantastic for students and can handle some light productivity stuff. At the other end of the scale, the iPad Pro models are productivity powerhouses and it tasks like 4K video editing and in-depth music production for breakfast. Slap bang in the middle of those two is the iPad Air, which is plenty powerful and can do many of the things that the Pro models can, but for a much more attractive price tag. The question is, where does this 6th generation iPad mini fit into that lineup? Before we jump into how the iPad Mini 6 performs when recording and working with audio, I realise that not everyone is mental like me and has or has access to multiple iPad models. Chances are if you do decide to pick up one of these new iPad Minis, it'll be your only or at least your main iPad device. So I thought I'd take a sec and let you know what it's like to use this device on a daily basis. The portability of the iPad mini 6th gen is definitely one of its biggest selling points. Almost small enough to fit in a pocket, but probably more suited to be thrown into a backpack or a bag. You can pretty much take this thing anywhere. As a father with a young child, I spend a lot of my spare time at home here, hiding in the bathroom, pretending to poop. And the iPad mini 6 proves a fantastic companion for this. It's small enough that I can sneak it past my wife without her catching on and the excellent screen and stereo speakers mean that consuming content in my porcelain fortress of solitude is a joy. Daddy, where are you? If you're a fan of consuming or creating content on the go, then you'll love the freedom that the iPad mini's form factor gives you. A quick note on screen brightness though, as the iPad mini 6 has a maximum screen brightness of 500 nits. Now that doesn't sound too bad until you compare it to the iPhone 13 Max's brightness of 800 nits. Using the iPad mini 6 in direct sunlight or in brightly lit spaces may cause some issues when it comes to visibility. Now, I absolutely love the iPad mini 6 as a content consumption device. You can easily and comfortably hold it in one hand for long periods of time. No, no, get your mind out of the gutter, thank you. And the upgrades that Apple have added to the screen and the stereo speaker system make it a joy to use. This refreshed iPad mini does not feature a smart connector, however, meaning that you're limited to third-party Bluetooth keyboards if you fancy getting a spot of typing done. Apple did also remove the previous model's headphone jack, and while necessary to bring the iPad mini in line design-wise with other newer iPad models, still a bit of a bummer. I miss my headphone jack. Having received a complete design overhaul, the iPad mini 6th generation now resembles a shrunken down 4th generation iPad Air 
or 2018 iPad Pro. Like the fourth generation iPad Air before it, the latest iPad mini forgoes Face ID for a Touch ID system that's situated on the power button. It's actually very, very handy. You'll also find the volume buttons on the top edge of the device. These are usually found on the right edge of larger iPad models, but due to the location of the Apple Pencil charging slash pairing point, these have been moved up to the top. You'll also find a pair of speakers and the built-in microphone up here too. On the bottom edge of the iPad mini is another pair of speakers and the USB-C port. Unlike the iPad Pro models, this is a straightforward USB-C port and not a Thunderbolt port. So you'll be able to transfer files at speeds up to 5 gigabits per second. You just wouldn't, would you? I don't think I've ever taken a real life photo with an iPad ever. But if you are one of the 0.01% of people who do use their iPad for photography, you'll enjoy using the Mini's 12 megapixel back camera and won't ruin the day of everybody standing behind you as you do so. The front facing camera is also 12 megapixels and features Apple's nifty center stage functionality as well. As far as battery life goes, you'll be getting pretty much a full day out of this device with moderate use. Planning to get stuck into a mammoth recording slash mixing session? Make sure you have a charger to hand, as while the battery life is pretty respectable here when it comes to regular day-to-day -day use, you'll soon run out of juice when pushing the Mini with more intensive tasks. Alright, so how does the iPad Mini 6th generation fare as an iOS music making machine? Really, really well. It's packing the A15 Bionic chip, which is the same chip found in the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. This in theory means that it's more powerful, on paper at least, than the fourth generation iPad Air. In GarageBand, it opens and closes projects quickly, loads instruments and sounds really fast, and provides an all-around silky smooth performance. In this clip, I've compared the project and live loop grid opening times of the iPad Mini 6th Gen to my 11-inch M1 iPad Pro. And this little guy does remarkably well. I created a try to break garage band project back when I tested the M1 iPad Pro that was designed to bring garage band to its knees and force that dreaded optimizing performance message to pop up. When loading this atom bomb of a project on the iPad mini minus a couple of third party plugins that I didn't have installed, it loaded and played it back like a champ after an initial few seconds of contemplation. This project completely locked up my 2018 iPad Pro when I tested it on that, so it is seriously impressive to see the iPad mini take it in its stride. This new iPad mini uses a quite bizarre aspect ratio, which means that most third-party apps have these weird bars at the edge of the display. Now, Apple have let developers know to update their apps to include the new resolution, but in the majority of non-Apple-made apps I tested, the issue was still present, so bear that in mind. Speaking of the display, I found I had issues playing on-screen keyboards and touch instruments on the iPad mini's 8.3-inch screen. Now, I'm acutely aware that this is down to my big old sausage fingers and not really Apple's fault in any way, shape or form. But if you also suffer with podgy digits, you may find that triggering GarageBand's touch instruments, for example, becomes a little bit of a chore. I still can't fully get on board with Apple's half-assed mouse and trackpad implementation, despite how useful it can be for tutorials and demonstrative video content. The Apple Pencil came in really handy for me. The 6th generation iPad mini supports the 2nd generation Apple Pencil 
only. It clicks onto the side of the iPad in the same way that it does on the Air and Pro models. Obviously this is another substantial added expense on top of what is already a pretty pricey device. Don't worry, we'll talk about the price in a minute. But I definitely found using the Apple Pencil both in day-to-day -day use and when working with audio extremely helpful. If you plan to keep things simple when recording or sampling audio, the iPad Mini's built-in microphone does an admirable job of clearly capturing whatever you point it at. If you want to hook up other audio gear like an audio interface or USB microphone, you'll likely need an adapter of some kind. Luckily, as the iPad Mini 6 has been updated with a USB-C port, you are no longer limited to Apple's own brand of dongles. I still highly recommend this, Anker's PowerExpand 6-in-1 adapter, as it gives you a standard USB port, a headphone jack, and the ability to charge your iPad while using it. I may have mentioned this once or twice during the course of this review, but I really like this iPad, and I'm pretty sure that you would like it too. What you might be less crazy about is how much this device costs. The iPad mini starts at £479 for the 64GB storage Wi-Fi only version. If you plan to use this device for any form of content creation, be that audio production or video editing or whatever, you will likely need more storage than that. The 256GB storage version starts at £619 for the Wi-Fi only version and goes up to £759 if you want Wi-Fi and cellular. That is quite a chunk of change especially considering you can get an 11-inch M1 iPad Pro with 128 gigabytes of storage for £749. You really are paying for the combination of performance and portability here. Whether you decide to pick up one of these things or not, one thing is for certain. No longer is the iPad mini a sluggish, out-of-date relic. This new model is right at the cutting edge of Apple's iPad lineup, and they have priced the device accordingly. If you are in the market for a new iPad, I would highly recommend taking a gander at Apple's iPad comparison page before making a final decision. And I'll stick a link to that down in the description. All right, those are my thoughts on Apple's iPad mini sixth generation. I want to know what you think about this pint-sized powerhouse down in the comments below. And make sure and hit that like button on your way out. I really appreciate it. Alright, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.